Good morning everyone, how are we all today? Uh, welcome back, we're on to part two of this beautiful sideboard behind me today. Um, so, if you haven't watched part one, I do recommend that you go back and have a quick scroll through. That was yesterday. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, it will be the video right before this. I'll make sure that they upload one after the other. So you can have a quick scroll through. Um, you don't have to watch it all, obviously, but just go through, have a look at what we've done. But quick recap for those of you who are playing catch up. Yesterday, um, we put down our basin blocker. So we put down our foundation for our paint. Uh, this sideboard is, it, it's pretty rickety. So inside currently, there's no back, there's no shelves, there's nothing at all. Um, it's just the outside frame at the moment. Uh, I had to take the back off completely. When I took the back off, the shelves, or what was holding the shelves up, which was only the back, completely fell apart as well um, because the side supports, all three supports, so the one for the drawer, one for the shelf and the one for the base, all three had fallen away over time. They'd been repaired a few times, but it just never been enough. Um, completely fallen apart. So when I took the back off, shelves fell out. They were beyond broken anyway. Uh, so the inside's got nothing at the moment, but we're working on the outside. We can work on the outside. We can do the inside. I'm waiting for it to stop raining so I can nip down to Bunnings and get some timber. But in the meantime, we're gonna have some fun on the outside of this piece. So. Uh, we have, I, I haven't shown it, but I did uh, clean this really well. I haven't posted the, I just did a quick time lapse sanding it, but I filled, I did fill a couple of um, more significant uh, damage to it. So there was a couple of cracks down the side. They've all been repaired, like they're not going to crack any further, uh, but I did repair those. Uh, I took the original handles off, which were, well, they weren't, they're not original to the piece, I don't think. Uh, based on the damage that was underneath them. But these were what were on it. So I just feel like they don't suit the style that we're going for. So I've taken them off. Save your handles. You never know when you might need them. Um, taken the old handles off. I have just filled those holes just to make it look a little bit neater and then we'll put new handles on it. Um, and then I, because of the amount of filler, filler sorry, uh, I have scrub sanded over the whole thing. Uh, with my orbital sander. Did really quickly, all over the whole thing. Um, gave it a dust down yesterday, and then we put our primer on. So our primer is Purico Basin Blocker. The one that I used, um, I don't have the jar here. It was actually the white that I mixed black into, so I mixed carbon into it to make it gray at some point in the past year, because uh, I needed gray at the time and I didn't have gray. So this isn't the gray basin blocker, but it is the gray basin blocker. Uh, and then we mix some of Purico's texture finish into it to create a really nice textured base to work onto. So the primer's doing its thing, it's gonna allow our paint to stick, but we've added the extra texture, which is um, just sorta, of, we've skipped a step sort of thing. Uh, you could always prime and then do the texture finish afterwards, but you can mix it into the primer, so do that. Uh, so now we've got a really, beautiful surface to work on. Got a bit of detail going on, got the texture going on. So now we can go in with our color today. So today, um, my plan is to have this about 75% done today. That's my goal. I wanna get coat one and two on this today. If it happens, it will be a miracle, but we're gonna try. Um, at the very least, we're gonna do the first coat right now. So. When I do this sort of finish, we're going green, we're going grungy, we're going really vintage, worn, aged. I do two coats and then if I need to, if I feel like it's not quite there, then I'll come back in and I'll do a third. Uh, we're gonna start with the first today. So this coat, we're not looking at finessing it. We're not looking at getting it really nice and perfect. We're just looking at getting the color on and sort of working out our positioning of the colors as well. Then we come in with the second coat once the first coat's dry and uh, that's when we sort of really start to finesse it. So we start to smooth it out, we work out exactly where we want the colours. Uh, something might not work today, it might not be in the right spot, so we just paint over that and we sort of keep working it. And then we'll come back, we're going to do some glaze on this one. Uh, we're going to hit it with a heat gun 
and I'm going to show you that. Re that's a really cool um, little trick that I've learned over the years uh, that gives you a really, really cool effect. Um, we're going to sand it up. We're going to make it a little bit banged up. So we're going to have a lot of fun with this piece. I need some fun. All I've been doing is beige and grey, and I am bored out of my brain. So we're having some fun. So before we do any of that, though, yesterday we put on our texture finish. So let me bring you a little bit closer. I don't know how well the camera's going to show it, but oh, no, not too bad. We've got lots of little bits of texture all over, but some of them, because we've stippled our brush, it's quite pointy and sharp. So what we're going to do, we're just going to take one of our sanding sponges. This is one of the Pure Eco sanding sponges in the 80 grit. Whenever I get the packet, I always write... 80 or whatever the grit is on it so I know what it is because once you start using sanding sponges it can become a little bit tricky so always write on it. LJ, oh you are watching love, can we get the uh, numbers written on them pretty please for people like me who struggle. <laughs> um, so all we're going to do and I just take this and we're not sanding off all our texture. All I'm doing is really really lightly just going over it and this is just going to knock back any of those really sharp points. Um, it's also going to make sure if we've got any points that haven't quite adhered, sometimes you'll have points that there's just not enough holding them on. They don't have enough of a base on them. So this just knocks anything off that's going to come off anyway as well. And we just really, really lightly do this. So I'm going to bring you back a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. And this is like, I don't know, a five minute job, if that. And we're not taking it all off. You don't use an electric sander for this, just use a uh, this one hand. You don't have to do it, of course. I just find it, uh, it just smooths it out that little bit and it look, makes it look a little bit more natural and not as much... Um... <laughs> of course they won't. <laughs> um, that's all right. We'll just, I'll just keep writing it on. Um, what was I saying? I distracted myself then. Now my brain's not thinking. Um, 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 um. Yes, don't use your electric sander for it. Do it by hand. You don't have to do this. Um, was that what I was saying? I feel like I've already said that. I'll think of it again. <laughs> Let's keep going. So, just really quickly all over. Um, it, it just smooths it out a little bit. It makes it look a little bit more natural. And I'm literally just brushing over this. Like, I'm not putting any weight behind this at all. Let me bring you over because you can't see a thing over there. There we go. And it's literally just smoothing it out. If you forget this step, um, it's not a big deal. It's literally, I'm not going to move the camera again. I'm just going to do around this side. Uh, it's just moving it. Just so that you're not, when you're running your hand over a piece, you don't want to like get to the point where you could potentially cut your hand or hurt yourself. So we're just very lightly going over it. We're just smoothing those points because they can be quite sharp. Uh, the texture finish when it dries. It's, it's, it's got a bit of, um, it's quite, it, it dries really, really hard is what I'm trying to say. So just a quick one. I apologise for all the background noise today. We've got the gym next door. They are absolutely blasting today. Uh, we've got the concrete place. I don't know what they're doing, but it's louder than usual. Um, and then I've got the heater on because I'm freezing my ass off. Uh, so it's just, it's just, it is what it is. I've got the microphone on, so hopefully, hang on, do I have it turned on? I do. <laughs> I do check. <laughs> I got the microphone on, so hopefully that helps. Um, I did a video the other day and I forgot to put it on and I realised afterwards when I watched it back um, that it, made, it, did, it did make a really big difference. So, um, you don't have to wipe your dust off, but it's up to you, really. 
I'm just giving it quick wipe over more than anything. This also just gives me, I need to slow my brain down a little bit sometimes. So this just gives me another second just to look over the piece as well. And lets me see if there's anywhere that I've really missed or that might need a little bit more sanding. Um, but it's looking really, really good. I'm really, really happy with this so far. So now we're gonna lay down our color. So let me swing you back this way for a second. Our colors. So what I've done is I've just pulled out every single green on my shelf. Will we use all of them? Probably not, but I pulled them out anyway because I like to have options. That's the best way to do a finish like this, I find. Some people like to just have one or two or three colors and, or one doesn't work, two or three colors and um, that works for them. So when you're doing a finish like this, just work out a method that works for you. I like to have options. Otherwise, I'm getting up 20,000 times to go and find the option that I want. So, this is what I'm doing. I've got my darks and I've got light. So we've got rainforest. Now these are all in silk finish because I've got silk finish open. Normally, I would use chalk finish. Chalk finish is a chalk paint. These are all Pure Eco paints. Chalk finish is chalk paint. Silk finish is an all-in-one mineral paint. Uh, similar to an acrylic, it's got the built-in top coat. Uh, the reason we didn't do our texture finish mixed with these paints is because the self-leveling component of the silk finish stops the texture from working as well as what it did. Um, I might even do a video one day just showing you how good the self-leveling is in this because it is really, really good. Um, it just stops that texture and it, the texture wouldn't be the same. So we're using silk finish because that's what I've got open. Use what you've got open. You don't have to necessarily use all furniture paint. In fact, we're not using all furniture paint. We're also going to be using some Montmartre acrylic. So use what you've got. This sort of finish is great when you've just got like a dribble of paint. Like some of these have got maybe a finger, a finger length left in them. Like this one feels like it's down here somewhere. So great way to use up your paint. So we've got, what did I say? Rainforest. We've got fern. I'm thinking fern is gonna be my main green on this one. We have got vineyard, I love vineyard. So we've got uh, myrtle, which is our most popular green. Vineyard is a double strength, you've seen me use this a couple of times lately. And then we've got acacia, which is a half strength of myrtle. So vineyard, one of my favorites. And I like this because it's a little bit different toned to the rainforest. And then to fern. So they're very, very different greens, but when you combine them all together, you can get a really, really cool effect. So those ones, and then I've got for a lighter color, even though we're going quite, I think we're gonna go on the darker side, and we're definitely going to rub over this with some glaze. I sometimes want a little bit of lightness as well, just to give it that um, depth. And because we've got all this detail on the doors as well. We've got a really nice trim. Um, we've got the beveled edges on the drawers. Sometimes it's nice to have a little bit of light just to sort of balance it. Sometimes it can get too dark. So you just want to balance it. And this is a really nice way um, just to sort of mix your colors a little bit as well. So we're going to, this is actually a custom mix. It is gum nut, sugar cane, fern, eucalypt and fossil. So it's a nice combination. It almost looks like meadow or pistachio. It's similar to those in the Pure Eco range. This is all um, silk finish again. And I think these were all sample pots. We did a video way back when I first moved into here. It was a whole table, I think, we put this on. And um, I was just using up pots of paint. <coughs> Excuse me. And then, I have no idea if there's even anything left in this. Uh, let me find a screwdriver to open it. Uh, hang on. <laughs> that's, that's easier said than done. I don't think this is going to open it. I've got this old tin of Authentico. This screwdriver is way too small to open anything. Um, sorry, hang on. My husband's telling me something. <laughs> but I've got, okay. There's a TV delivery, apparently. Hang on, let me get this can open because I haven't actually looked inside of it yet. 
So, years ago, like four years ago, that's not working either. Um, I used to stock um, Authentico, which is a European brand. This is the tin. Uh, I don't believe they're available in Australia at all anymore. I know that the distributor is no longer selling it. Um, there we go. So get the right tool, you can open anything. Uh, so I used to stock this. This I stocked this just just before I started stocking this just before Purico started, and there was like a little gap, so I needed a brand to stock. Um, and I tried this and really, really liked it. So it's a chalk paint. Um, oh, it's still wet inside. So I love this green. I've actually used it a couple of times. Um, it's very similar to Vineyard, but it's a little bit um, darker. It's like saying sort of vintage tones. So we're going to use a little bit of that as well because I've still got to open it and it needs to be used. My, the tin's a bit gross though, so... Um, that's our greens, and then I also grabbed, because sometimes you want a little bit more contrast, uh, and I'm, I love these couple of colours. So we've got yellow ochre, so these are the Montmartre acrylics. I've got burnt sienna, so I've still got a couple of tubes of this available. I don't have any of the yellow ochre anymore, and I think this is called... Just peel the sticker off that my child's put on it. Viridian, there you go. I think I called it Vivian yesterday. <laughs> so this is a really nice um, like aqua green as well. Again, don't have any left on my shelf, but these are what I'm using. You can pick these up in um, most art stores and that sort of thing, whatever you've got. I like, like I might only use like a pea size amount, but sometimes it's nice just to sort of blend it in. All right, let's grab brushes. So when I'm doing a finish like this, I know there's a little bit of talking first and then we'll start. Um, I grab a variety. I won't use all of these. God, I hope I don't use all of these. My sink is tiny at the back. It barely fits a hand, let alone a brush. Um, I've grabbed a whole heap. It's up to you what kind you use. Um, sometimes these are palm brushes. It's a little bit wider, or oh, it needs a bit of a wash, I think. Uh, are really nice just to uh, do like a big sweep of color. Really nice over the texture to sort of dry brush a larger area as well. Um, I've got this old, this is a paint pixie brush. Uh, LJ, I'm not sure if you still stock these. Um, I've had it for years. It's quite a nice brush. It's a round brush. It's the natural bristle. I've got, this is a 63 millimeter brush. I've got a 25 millimeter brush. I've got a 50 mil. Uh, that's a 38 and then another 38. So I've just grabbed them all. I probably won't use them all, but we'll just have a play. Also, I don't always use a plate or a palette for this. I just dip into the tins and hope for the best. Um, shall we begin? I think it's time to begin. That's enough talking. I think which brush do I want to use though? Oh, I do like this one. Um, so this is a 50 mil. It's a natural bristle. It's the same as our other oval brushes. Let me bring you over. You need a nice big view. Which door are we going to start on today? I think let's start on this one. I'm feeling this is the door. All right. So I'm going to grab my tins. Now, I know that I want fern to be my base colour. Uh, yeah, import fees are insane. Hang on. Shake the paint or stir it. It is now raining again as well. So if the rain really comes down because we're in a tin shed, you won't be able to hear anything I'm saying. All right. Fern, my dad's like, Fern just does it for me. I absolutely love it. We have got Vineyard. Shake the paint a little bit first. Vineyard. I'm gonna open up our little white one. Don't be like me, wipe the edges of your jars so you can open them. You're getting a bit, a little bit. It's very, very thick, this one, because it was a mix. But it'll do the job. That one. Let's open our... I don't know if there's any rainforest left in this. To be oh, no, there is. Little tiny bit of our rainforest. And our... This one's called Wilderness. The um, Autanico one as well. So there's our paint colours. All lined up in a pretty little row. Uh, 
there's no rhyme or reason to this. Just start putting it down and get a feel for where you like. I am going to start with my fern because I know I want this to be my main colour. Now, keeping in mind, these are all silk finish except for the uh, Alternico colour. Some of these, the coverage isn't the best on the first coat. Some of these need that second coat to get that coverage. So just keep that in mind as well. Um, and literally just put it anywhere you like. So I sort of, when I'm laying down colours for the first time, I just sort of start one colour at a time. And it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, I haven't sanded the top either. That will be sanded last. Uh, because it's been too wet and too rainy, so it just hasn't been done yet. So I am just sort of want to lay it down in a few spots and sort of work out where we're going. Move them all along, don't forget our base. Now the bases, I generally end up going quite dark on the base. So we'll put some in there. But there's a high probability that I'll end up being quite dark on the base. So you won't see as much of the fern. Let me spin you. So when I'm doing a piece like this, I don't want it to be exact. So what I've done there, I don't necessarily want there. But I want it... I don't want it too far away from each other either. So it's not necessarily what I've done to one I do to the other. But I just want to... I don't want it to be like complete polar opposites either. Uh, we're, not, we're not worried about brush strokes at all. Silk finish levels anyway, but brush strokes really isn't something that I'm looking at here. here in the middle. Okay, and then we like that. Alright, so we're gonna look a little bit patchy. We're gonna come around the end. Uh no we're not. We're gonna start with the front. Sometimes I go all the way around, sometimes I just do the front. I think no we're gonna do the front. I think we're gonna work by piece by piece. Okay. Um, I'm going to come in and do the opposite end of the scale and I'm going to come in with Rainforest. And I'm using the same brush so it's going to blend out a little bit. And you can go straight over the top. And we're just sort of mapping this out. So this is like, for those of you who do your full face of makeup, You've done your primer, your moisturiser, etc. That's our base and blocker. This is like you're laying down your contour if you do your contour before your foundation. So this is your contour, getting it all in place, getting it, like marking out where you want it, and then you blend it out with your next coat. I think that's the best way to explain this. When I explain it like that, most people tend to understand somewhat. It does make more sense. I feel like I don't have enough room here. Hang on. That's better. Alright, that's better. So we're just sort of going to bring it up, bring it around, work it together a little bit, but we are very much just getting this paint on there as well. Get it into all those grooves of our door, like so, and then we'll come over this side. I want to do, and like I don't, they don't have to be touching, so we don't have to do green on green on green. So not every single piece has to necessarily touch, but sometimes it's nice to have a little bit of that. And because our paint's nice and wet, you can have a spray bottle on hand for this as well. First coat, I don't always. Sometimes it's nice to. It is quite cool in here, so my paint's staying quite wet. Um, so I do have a little bit of extra work time. But if you feel like you want to sort of blend as you're going, you can come in with a spray bottle as well, just to keep it a little bit damper as well. Uh, what else do I want? A bit more. I want some of this down here. 
because I know my base is going to be darker. I always, for some reason, oh, now we've got some um, vineyard because I had in my head and my brain got confused. So the vineyard's almost got like a yellowy base. And sometimes that's nice to bring in. So I actually quite like that. So I'm going to bring in a little bit more up here. So you can switch brushes. If it's really just mixing too much for you, switch your brush out. Like so. And bring a little bit over here. Down, take a step back if you need to. Sometimes um, you just need a little bit of perspective as well. And if it just feels like it's not working, walk away from it for a little bit. Sometimes we just need to take a few minutes. Sometimes I have to walk away for it for a few days. Um, if it just feels like it's just not working, take a moment and have that sort of break from it. Go do something else. Because it should just sort of You'll know when it's working because it will just, it'll just feel right. And when it's not, you'll just, you, you will know. I'm going to come in with some of that Botanico. I'm just going to give it a mix because it's a bit gunky and separated because it hasn't been used in so long. So it's a, just a, it's like an army green almost. This is going to look quite mottled, but then we're going to really blend all these colours together. Um, and that's, where are we? That one. So this just some fern. Make sure that I sort of get most areas with coverage more than anything as well. I don't want to see any basin blocker really after I've done this today. Clean you up. I'm going to come back in with some uh, rainbows. I'm having so much fun. This is so much better than grey. And you sort of just keep kicking those areas. I'm going to come in with more fern up the top here. I'm going to blend that up. And after your first coat, sometimes it really does just look like a bit of a hot mess. There's a, it's just part of the process. I'm going to come in with some of that really pale green. See how light that is? But it just brightens it just a little bit. The one thing I really try to avoid when I do something like this is having dark, dark, dark light and working in like an ombre. I find when you do that, it doesn't look as natural but where you sort of, you've got dark here and then you've got dark smack bang in the middle, but then you've got light on the outside. If you try and play it off each other a little bit, it looks a little bit more natural and you get, I think it looks uh, more natural. <laughs> I just think it looks better overall rather than like that uh, perfect ombre look. If I worked what, like the light in the middle of this, I just think it would throw out the whole piece. So you can really, it doesn't all have to be exact. And I'll bring some of that light that's still on my brush over here. Oh, I'm so in love with it. Um, and we've already got texture as well. So I'm not fast about like doing whatever with my brush and touching paint that's almost dry uh, because that's going to help build uh, build the colour a little bit too. I'm going to block in some of that botanical in there. 
and I'm gonna bring in some more of that rainforest too. I'm really liking the rainforest. It's got like a blue to it almost. I've got this big patch of green down here of the fern. So now I'm just wanting to, a little bit more. Bring it together, like so. I'm gonna grab a little bit of that light. And when I'm putting it on, I'm like grabbing next to nothing sometimes as well, because you don't always want a lot. And that light color is a really nice way to sort of blend out some of your colors as well. And I might come in later and decide that I don't like any of it. And Back, have a little look. I'm liking this just here, and I think I want to continue that down the door. And I'm going to bring it across just a little bit, not too much, a little bit. Just make sure when you are doing this, you don't have like really big drips of paint. And with this detailing, it's sort of just make sure it doesn't matter. It's like it's not a big deal, but you don't want big drips of paint everywhere too, because that sort of takes away from the look a little bit too. And then I'm gonna bring some of that fern down here as well. And I'm gonna grab a little bit of that, is it vineyard, vineyard? Coming down to this base. I'm just gonna move everything. I wanna get this base where I need it to be. So I want to keep that one and I want that one. I wanna get the white out of the road for a moment. So, just using what's on my brush for a second. I'm gonna come in with more of that rain for, uh, is it rainforest? Yeah, rainforest. I'm loving these colors together because they're so different uh, tonally. So they're, you wouldn't see them next to each other on, say you're picking your color on your computer or something. You wouldn't see these colors necessarily near each other but they work really, really well together when you're doing something like this. So I'm just bringing that all the way along. I've got some fern down the bottom here as well. And I love the way fern and um, rainforest looks together. I'm gonna come in with some of this Ortenico color. So just brush that over the top as well, add a little bit of depth. Take a moment, have a look. I'm not loving this bit here. I think I want a little bit more rainforest. Just a little bit. And sometimes it's nice to sort of brush in different directions as well. That way you get away from those brush stroke looking um, blends. And it gives you a little bit more variety in the finish. Um, if you're finding that your blend is looking really brush strokey and just like you're sort of going up and down and side to side, use a round brush or find a brush that's a little bit different. So use a bigger brush. Sometimes a bigger brush is enough to sort of pull, pull you away because it's a little bit awkward or use like a nice round brush. So you've got a few options there as well. If you feel like you're just going back and forth, up and down, and you're getting a bit stuck, sometimes it's nice just to change up what brushes you're using. I'm gonna bring a little bit of our lighter green down the bottom here as well. And bring that across. And again, first coat. So if I decide that I don't like it, I can paint over it.
make a difference. I'm going to come in with some vineyard. And I want a little bit of this other one too. Now if your brush starts to feel like it's getting a little bit full, a little bit muddy, and it's just not spreading it how you want it to, you can switch out your brushes as well as you need to. I'm getting a phone call in the middle of that. <laughs> Now, I do this with doors and drawers in, and then I will take the drawers and doors out, and I'll actually clean up those sides as well. It is much easier to do this look with everything put together. Um, that brush isn't working for me. I'm going to change that. Start afresh. Sometimes it just does get a little bit bogged up, and you just end up with a bit too much on there. Coming down. This is some of that vineyard. Oops. Putting it everywhere. And we're going to glaze this and we'll probably end up using one of the darker glazes as well, probably sable. Um, so it will get that little bit more depth and um, darkness to it as well. Here in the straw. Let's mix that up a little bit. Feeling a little bit. Need something. Wipe of that across there too. And I'm going to grab my couple of other colours in a second as well, my Montmartre. I just want to get these colours down. I feel like these are working really well. We're going to bring in our Montmartre in a second for our accents and add some of those, I think. I'm just bringing in that mixed lighter colour. I really, really have. I really enjoy doing things like this. It, sometimes it gets a bit much doing one and get one. Hang on, that wasn't a good sentence. Doing one and then another and then another and then another. Sometimes it gets a bit much and you need that little break up with some simpler pieces. But these are, this is fun. I was looking through my um, my albums the other day of all the old pieces that I've done because I've been trying to post. Uh, just a few more throwbacks and that sort of thing of pieces that I've done in the past and I used to be so fun Everything was just like this it, it was I was experimenting so much uh, And this is only like five years ago when I was really really getting into it um, I was really experimenting and I used to have so much fun and then at some point I got a bit boring um, But it's nice sort of coming back and being able to still do these fun finishes. Admittedly, the market here in Bendigo can be a little bit boring and it doesn't always, pieces like this don't always do as amazing. Uh, so when I can get them as commissions, I jump on them. But again, I'm just here, I'm just trying not to just have light in the middle and dark on the outside. That's why I've just brought some of that dark in here. And there's going to be quite a lot of glaze on these as well. So the inside panels, I really want that glaze. I want this detail to pop. So I am going to be quite heavy with the glaze on these inside panels. But that looks heaps better just there. Quite happy with that. I feel like down here needs a bit of... A 
I'm just trying to make sure that it's fairly well balanced still, even though it's not. Let me bring you out here a little bit so you can stand back where I'm standing. Hang on, I'm trying to get you as far back as I can. There we go. So I'm just trying to make sure that we're, it's balanced but not, but not identical. So, and that really plays a role in it. If it's like, this is dark and that's dark exactly, and then this is always light and this is always light and then they're dark. It just, when it feels too balanced, it throws it out. So you want it balanced, but still mismatched. And I'll say that a thousand times. Oh, thank you, Jenny. I really like them too. Alright, I'm thinking I definitely just want a bit more dark down here, but I definitely want to bring in some of these. I'm liking this mix just here, and I'm liking this bit down here. So I've already got some of that lighter green, so I'm thinking I want to capture some of these, which was the vineyard and the uh, rainforest. So let's bring those two down, and I think we might mix in a little bit of that Autenico as well. So we're going to come down. see what I'm doing. I'm sorry. Come in here and see what I'm doing. Sorry, guys. I'm like, oh, they'll be right. They can see. No, you can't. I'm so sorry about that. Come over here. There we go. Right. The um, vineyard almost looks quite brown when it's mixed with the greens, but it's such a nice green on its own. I'm just trying to get away from that up and down sort of brush stroke there. Uh, and we're going to come down with a bit more. Mm, let's come in with some of this darker green, I think. And yes, I do paint my hinges when it's pieces like this. Having a gold hinge or a black hinge or something else standing out in the middle of, of this, it looks so out of place. So yes, I do paint the hinges. I do um, service them, so I give them a good oil. I make sure they're good to go. Um, I make sure they're not gummed up with paint, but I do paint them. Just bring that across a little bit and up into here a little bit too. I quite like that there. I think that looks quite good. A little bit over here as well, I think. Okay, so this is sort of our first coat on the front. I'm quite happy with where it's at. Obviously, it's got a long way to go, but I am quite happy with that. So let's come around. So the sides are a little bit different because we're working with this big flat area. It doesn't have much going for it. There's not a lot of detail. It can be sides I find the most difficult because they are very much the fronts are easy because you've got the drawers, you've got the door, you've got that detail happening. Whereas at the side, bring that there, it's just a big flat canvas. Um, and I find that very, very daunting personally. So what I start with is I look at what I've got on the front and bring that around. So I know that I've got the dark up the top, I've got that vineyard and the Autenico down the bottom. So I'm going to start with that. So I'm going to bring... some of that dark around and you want when you're coming around your sides you do want them to look like it's the same piece continuing you don't want it to be 
like white up here. Like I would have come in with our really pale green up the top here and have dark light and have that no blend, a stark, uh, yeah, stark transition. Because it just be it be in your face and you always notice it, and it just doesn't blend as well. So then I'm going to come in with some of our, and I can bring some around the side still. I can still like it's one piece, so we're going to work with all of it. And I'm going to come in with some of our fern. And I'm going to just going to sort of pop that down in a few spots. work with what's on my brush as well. Obviously all the paints are mixed together on my brush, so we're gonna make use of that. I am gonna come in with some of that light though, because we've already brought that dark around, but now we're gonna bring that in. Like so. Now I'm gonna come down and we're gonna bring in uh, just driven in. I just need to see if I need to go and see if it is or if it's coming in here. Give me two minutes. I will be back in a second. Don't mind me. What's the paper? I've made five dollars today. My husband's made five dollars today, but it's now my money, so there we go. <laughs> All right. Um, where was I? All right. So we're bringing in. Let's keep bringing in our darker greens. Uh, sorry, our vineyard. And again, down the bottom, we've got our rainforest. So let's bring that down and around. everything I always spend the most amount of time on sites because it's just there's not much to go on and I always spend more time finessing these than what I do the rest of it. Yeah, 
have a look. I quite like that actually. That's really working for me. I think I want to come in with just a little bit of this white color because I am liking this bit up here. Not a lot, just a little bit. And I'm liking... I've got some texture down here and I just want a little bit down there too. Look, but this is going to be painted over as well. So not all of that will be then seen again. How are we looking? I'm pretty happy with that. I feel like our base needs... What do we want? I think we want some of this. Check the roof plot. haven't yet at all is let me find something to squeeze this onto that's not hang on I'm coming with a couple of these we haven't come in with these at all yet sometimes I come in with them straight away where's my other ones gone oh they're right in front of me <laughs> sometimes I come in with them straight away sometimes I come in with them later and I'm literally just squeezing out a tiny little drop of each. I probably won't even use the whole drop. We'll just sort of see. I'll see what I'm liking. And if I'm not liking it, then I'll take them away. And a little bit of, so that's uh, yellow okra, burnt sienna, and viridian. These are colors. And I'm liking, I like viridian because it's quite bright. And it's really, really subtle. But sometimes it's just a really nice, a really nice mix. Light. Do you remember me saying that? That this was mostly going to be fern? <laughs> That's already got out the window, hasn't it? I just can't help myself sometimes. Okay, that's that end. Let's leave that here. Let's go down the other end. For a little wander. I'm sorry, it will be a little bit louder down here. Sorry. Cause the... Because, not cause. Because the heat is just gone. everything out of the road. Okay, so again, the reminder of where we were on this side. So we've got a lot of our fern, a little bit of dark down the bottom. So this is sort of what we're going to bring around. So we're going to go down here. Give me two seconds. I'm just going to grab a drink. Have a quick drink. Okay. So we're going to bring our fern around first. And we're going to come down. And we're going to bring in 
our um, dark colors too. So I'm going to start with our fern up the top here. Let's bring it all the way across. So whereas the other side was very much the opposite. And that's okay. We can have that bit of a difference from one side to the other. I'm going to bring it right down, I think. And while I'm here, I'm going to bring some over here. I'm just really going to pop it down in a few spots. And then I'm going to come in and we're going to do the opposite and we're going to come in with our dark. We're almost out of this. I'll have just enough of this left to do um, a second coat, I think. So I'm going to bring it down. I'm going to bring it up into that fern. And bring it across. And I'm going to grab some of that Alternico one, the wilderness. Let's get that really, really grungy and dark down here at the bottom. But I'm also going to come in with just a little bit of that lighter colour up in there too. Just sort of help blend that together. Bring it through a little bit. I'm going to bring some of this dark colour up here. I find sometimes for like a big surface area like this that it is easier just to sort of do big strokes, put it everywhere that you like. If you find a bigger brush, it's easier to use that. This is quite a small brush for a big area. Um, but sometimes it's sort of easy just to go for it and then finesse it as you go. I'm gonna bring in some of that vineyard. I'm gonna bring it down here. I want this base that little bit darker, I think up there into that rain. There was nothing on my brush all in. Where's the paint down the bottom? There's very, very little left in this tin. the mix of the fern and the vineyard together. I think it's a really, really nice colour. I don't like it yet. Mm -hmm. Give it a minute. Mm -hmm. Let's go in with this darker green from the Ortenico. Well, let's just bring it up into that bit up there. Ended up quite dark on this side. I feel like we want to wipe that off. And I'm going to grab some of that white colour too. I just feel like we've ended up a little bit too dark. Which happens. We just lighten it off again. That's better. I'm liking this down here, but I feel like I definitely want it to be a lot more, and we're going to blend it into that darker green. I'm going to grab some of that vineyard as well in there. So we're just sort of bringing it across, joining it together.
Like, this is the first coat, so and it's not working for me at the moment, and I'm not sure why. But it's first coat, and that's okay. Let me look at the other end again. Give me a second. Look quite similar to the other end, I think. I think I need to, and then looking at the front, I think I want to bring in some more of that fern more than anything. I really want some more up through here. I want it brought down into this. Just that little bit more, because we've got a lot of that fern just there on the front as well. I just feel like this side is has lost that a little bit. This bit here is a little bit too in your face. Let's bring some more of that fern. darker colour too. Just here in the middle. Alright, I'm quite happy with that at the moment. So again, I'm going to grab a couple more art paints. Not a huge amount, just a little bit more. And I'm just brushing it over just a few sections where I feel like it could be beneficial. Just a little bit of that brown. So I'm just sort of more, more than anything right now, I'm just sort of placing these roughly where I want them. They probably won't still be there once we do that next coat. But I just sort of want to put them down more than anything. So I can sort of see what I've got going on here. Like so. Just a little bit. Oh, but that yellow down through there too. Okay. Beautiful. Right, so let's go around the front. I'm going to do the same on the front. Where are we? Back here. So, and I'm literally just putting a little tiny wipe just there on the edge of my brush. And it's 
not necessarily like a huge amount. I just want to sort of place it, work out where I want it. I might decide that I don't like it at all, but I do like to do a few different colours in there sometimes. It just helps me work out where, where I want everything on my last coat. Now, remembering the front's pretty much dry at this point, so like these aren't going to blend in like they were on the sides. For some places, I just want that little bit, like that bit of green. I want a little bit through there too. So let me bring you in a little bit closer just so you can see. I suppose the close up of it, but see the texture that we've achieved and how that texture looks underneath our paint. So this is the texture that we put on yesterday with our primer. looks these are uh, the what's it called the burnt sienna and the yellow okra can almost look like rust so it's quite nice sometimes to have a little bit around the handles and where your handles are so I'm just sort of placing that there as well all right so let me bring you in closer so we're done for the moment I'm gonna let this dry for a couple of hours and then depending on how my day is going um, we're going to, I'll either be back today or I'll be back tomorrow with part, part three, we're up to part three, um, doing the second coat over it, but I'm going to let it dry today. I'm now going to go and make a, uh, Minecraft outfit for my son for book week. <laughs> so I'm going to do that in a second, but let me bring you in closer first before we go. So here we are. Let me stand right back so you can see it looking gorgeous. And come around, we've got the side. So I really mottled, you can see that texture and sort of brushing that viridian over can sort of highlight the texture. We're not quite up to highlighting textures yet, but like we've just placed down those other colors just to sort of work out where we're at. I can see the camera's throwing these colors off so, so much right now. That's probably the closest representation of what's on your screen right now of what the colors are like in real life. I'll put some up through here.
bit of tea tail. So we have used mostly silk finish as well. So most brush strokes will sort of flatten themselves out anyway. You're always gonna see them a little bit. Uh, we haven't been gentle with our brushes. Looking pretty. So what I will do as well, all underneath this top, I will tidy up. I'll do the doors and the drawers as well. I'll tidy all those up as well. So um, for right now, we're making a mess it, and it doesn't matter that we're making a mess. So there's the other side. Some of that texture. So some of the texture like down here is quite significant. That's where we got it really, really thick, the texture and the primer down here. And then other areas, it's so subtle, like just up here, up through here. It's really, really subtle and you can just see it, but it adds that little bit of difference. So let's just walk from one side to the other so you can see sort of how we've all come together. And come around to this side. So can you see how we've brought our light green around down the bottom? We've brought our dark around. Same on this other end. We've got dark around through the middle. We've got those vineyards and the fern coming around. And then down the bottom. Um, now my husband's calling me too. <laughs> Everyone wants me at the moment. All right, so that's where we're at. Uh, I'm gonna leave this. We're gonna let it fully dry. Um, I find it's much easier to do the second coat if we let the first coat fully dry. I've got the heater on. I might even whack another heater on it. I'm gonna go and create a Minecraft mask and then we'll see how we're going. Uh, if I've got time and if we're not too busy, we're gonna come in and do another coat I would say around, it's 11 o'clock now, probably around 12, 31 o'clock, I think we'll do the second coat. I'll see how I go. If I don't come on alive again today, it will be tomorrow. All right, that's where we're at. Looking gorgeous. All right, thank you all so much for joining me. I really, really appreciate it. And um, these videos will all be up on our YouTube as well, but I'll wait until we finish the piece before I put them up. Uh, it just makes it a little bit easier and then nobody's waiting around. Uh, have a lovely afternoon. If I haven't spoken, if I, uh, if I don't see you today, if I don't see you again today, um, thank you all. Bye.